That's called Hi Anthony. Be as greedy as you want. Get your money's worth. So thank you a billion times for donating to the Indiegogo that got me and Connor to college wizardry. I cannot wait to make a whole bunch of videos for you to watch so you can live vicariously through me and go on Hogwarts adventures. Your questions for me. Do you still do tabletop RPG? And if so, can we hear a little more of that nerdy hobby? I did Dungeons and Dragons a really long time ago, but I think, and this is part of the reason why I got into LARPing, I didn't like just the sitting down and like the describing doing things and the rolling for numbers and just the almost like the logistics of it like I wanted to be up and doing those things the thing I miss about it so much is just the fantasticalness of it like there are things that can happen in tabletop RPGs that you would never be able to rep in the LARPing universe. And I mean like obviously in LARPing you can just put your hand on your head and be like physical description I just turn into a frog. But for I know for me personally since I'm so into the acting side of it that takes me out of the experience and then I have to find a way to get back in. Whereas in D&D it's just it's seamless through the whole story for crazy stuff to happen all the time and you can go to all these places, you can go to big cities, you can go to abandoned farms, like it's just there's so much more that you can do in the medium of tabletop RPG, so I really 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 want to uh, give it another go soon. Uh, how does the LARPing community, from your experience, deal with people with disabilities? And obviously I can't speak for all LARPing communities, like I've heard of bad ones, I've heard of good ones, but in my experience all the LARPs that I've been to have been completely accepting and have adjusted to suit those with disabilities, physical, mental, whatever. And a friend of mine brought up something recently that made me really think about people with disabilities in the LARPing world, <laughs> in the LARPing community. <laughs> but I personally do not like call it systems. Like I really liked College of Wizardry because it was just, it was all acting. Like you'd make up a spell and you just had to react to it in the way that you think you would react to it. So there were no call outs at College of Wizardry and I felt like I was in character all the time. And I don't personally like systems in the West where it's like very heavy call outs. Like every time you hit someone you have to say what kind of hit it was and the number. I'm like, I blink out of existence. One, two, three. Like I, I just want people to like, I prefer LARP systems where people just act it out and just use their imagination almost and like a trust-based system. But somebody brought something up to me the other day and they said that a call-out system kind of evens the playing field for people with disabilities. Like, if you have a physical handicap, you don't have to, f you don't have to actually be good at sword fighting in order to play somebody good at sword fighting in a LARPing universe. Like you can be a master swordsman just by swinging your sword and calling out high numbers. If you have a, a mental disability that affects your social skills, you can play a great diplomat with these charisma skills that some LARPs have. And that, that, that definitely made me think. And also that makes me really happy because LARPing is so broad and it's so many things that that no matter where you go, there's, oh, I don't know how to say this. Like LARPing can be so many things, so maybe you go to a LARP that isn't very accessible to people with disabilities, there's going to be a LARP almost exactly like it that is in some ways. And I love that LARPing can be so many things because everyone can kind of find something that they enjoy and that suits them and is right for them. But even overall, I've discovered that at least the LARPs that I've been to, people are very understanding and adaptable for those with disabilities. If you come across a LARP that isn't, not only is it probably a bad LARP, they're probably bad people, but you can find another and it will be good. So you say you have trouble uh, walking so you might not be good at a battle warp. Um, Dylan, my buddy who plays Caswell in the Reaper of Scallions, has um, a condition where he has to walk with a cane a lot of the times and it's very painful for him to do physical activity a lot of times, but he still is an avid larper and he's been to Bicoline and he loves it so much. And I think that's why he enjoys the LARPs with the heavy call-out system because it sort of helps him along as well. Have you ever run or helped organize a LARP? I do all the videos for my main post-apocalyptic LARP. Um, other than that, there's a video on my main channel of me running like an experimental Nordic style LARP, which is like, it's the first LARP that I've written and the first LARP that I ran. I don't know if I'd ever like to be like a storyteller on a LARP team or anything just because I love 
playing LARP so much and I'd hate to sacrifice that in order to storytell. Like I'd love to do more one-off style LARPs in my own home, but I don't think I would ever want to sacrifice my LARP weekends to storytell and that sounds awful, but like I love it too much, you know, to just spend it behind a desk sending NPCs out, I guess. A little lighter for my last question. Is there a LARP setting you've not done yet and are dying to try out? Oh, oh, let me tell you, I want to do a Star Wars LARP <laughs> so bad. I just want to be a cute Jedi girl with a pink lightsaber so bad. I really want to do it. Also, I want to try Hinterland, which is um, a very roleplay heavy LARP in Europe where they use actual weapons. It's, it sounds really scary, but there's no combat. It's all just intimidation. So it's a post-apocalyptic LARP where people like can steal each other's foods and blankets and it's, it's, it's pretty rough, it's pretty scary. So I think I'd like to have Connor with me for that one as well. But like if somebody shows up with you, to you um, with a knife, and they're like, err, and you don't have a knife, and you're like, oh, okay, you can have my food because you would hypothetically win in this situation. It's all, acting and intimidation and I jump at any opportunity to feel fear in LARP apparently, which is weird because I don't like horror movies. I've never thought about that before. Mm. Thank you again, Anthony, for donating to the Indiegogo. I appreciate it a lot and I can't wait to make videos for you. Bye!